last night but I didn't feel too good with my I think I had something to do with my medication so um I didn't I really didn't feel like it y'all see where I was working on my quilt and all uh when when it happened I just didn't feel like doing it so I wasn't going to come in here and try to read and everything in it you know not work out so um we're going to work on Exodus 10, and we'll work from there and see what, see how many we can get out today. Alright, Exodus 10, and the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart, and the heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before him. And that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son, and of thy son's sons, that things I have uh, brought into Egypt, and my sons which I have done among them, that ye may know how that I am the Lord. And Moses and Aaron came to Pharaoh, and said unto him, Thou saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else, if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring the locusts unto the coast, and they shall cover the face of the earth, that one cannot be able to see the earth, and that they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped, which remaineth unto you from the hail. And that shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field. And they shall fill thy house, and the houses of thy servants, and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither thy father nor thy father's father have seen, since the day that they were upon the earth, upon, unto this day. And he turned himself and went out from uh, Pharaoh. Now, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but check it out. Uh, Mecca is full of cockroaches and uh, locusts. And Pharaoh's servant said unto him, How long shall this man be a, a snare unto us? Uh, let the man go, and they may serve the Lord their God. Knowest thou not yet the Egyptian is destroyed? And Moses and Aaron were brought again to Pharaoh, and he said, "Go serve the God of the Lord of Lord your God." But who are they that shall go? And Moses says, "We will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters, with our flock and with all our herd. We will go, for we must hold a feast unto the Lord." And he said unto them. Let the Lord be so with you, as I let you go, and your little ones. Look to it, for evil is before you. Not so. Go now, ye that are men, and serve the Lord, for he, that he did desire. And they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy, thy hand over the land of Egypt. For the locusts, 
that they may come up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hell hath left. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. And the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coast of Egypt. Very grievous were they. Before them there were no such locusts as they, neither after them shall be such. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened. And they did eat every herb of the land, and all the fruit of the trees which the hell had left. And there remained not any green thing in the trees or in the herbs of the field, though all the land of Egypt. And Moses called from, and Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron to haste, and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now therefore forgive, I pray thee my sin only this once, and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away from this death only. Take away from me this death only. This is 18. And he went out from Pharaoh and intrigued the Lord. And the Lord turned a mighty strong wind, which took away the locusts and cast them to the Red Sea. And there remained not one locust in the coast of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand towards heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. Ooh, may be felt, you feel the darkness. And Moses stretched forth his hand towards heaven, and there was a thick darkness in the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one, and neither rose any from his place for three days. Ooh, think about the stink. Because if you can't get up and move around, and you got to go to the bathroom, you're going to go to the bathroom where you are. And think about how hungry they got. Ah, oh, but all the children of Israel had lights in their dwelling. All right, so think about this then. Since it was light in the dwelling, their electricity was gone. Let's just put it that way. Because you know, in um, in the daytime, you've got light. Light coming in from the windows and all. But you have to have that. All right, 24. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye serve the Lord. Only let your flock and your herd be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. And Moses said, Thou must, uh, must give us also sacrifice and burnt offering, that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. <coughs> uh, our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not a hoof be left behind. For there uh, must we take to serve the Lord our our God, and we know not what we must serve the Lord until we come thither. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. And Pharaoh said unto him, Get thee from me, take heed to thyself, see my face no more, for in that day thou seest my face, thou shalt die. And Moses says, They have spoken well, I will see thy face again no more. And Moses said, I'm on chapter 11 now. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh, upon Egypt. Afterwards he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. In other words, you better be ready to go. Speak now in the ears of the people. And let every man borrow of his neighbor, and every woman her neighbor, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptian, 
Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, and in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon the throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of the beast. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. Number seven. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against men or beasts, that ye may know how the Lord doeth put a difference between the Egyptian and Israel. Now, I have to stop right here. Okay? Now, Israel is a type of sin. Okay? And you know Israel stands for God's people. So, I want you to know, I want you to see what this is saying here. I'm going to read it again. Number 7. We're on Exodus 11 to 7. But a Against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know that the Lord doeth put a difference between the Egyptians and the other. So there is a difference between his people and the sinners, okay? So when they say, when people say, oh, um, you know, I. I believe in God, but I'm going out here and there's sin in it. God don't see no difference in it. He does see a difference. Right here it tells you there is a difference in the, the sinners and his people. Now, Hebrew uh, means human, okay? Israel means people for God, okay? Alright, let's go on. We're on number eight. And I'll these thy servants shall come down to me and bow down themselves unto me, saying, Get thee out, and all the people that follow thee, and after that I will go out. And he went for Pharaoh in a great anger. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. And Moses and Aaron did all the wonders before Pharaoh, and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, so that he would not let the children of Israel go out of his land. All right, now we're on number 12. Let's see how big it is. Oh, boy. Yes. All this are here, page. And part of this page, not much. Okay, we're going to go on to number 12. We're going to, we're going to go for it anyway. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of a month. It shall be the first of the year to you. So this right here would be like January the 1st. Okay? So, uh, I don't know when it is, but... Number three. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the house be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make their count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep and from the goats, and you shall keep it upon, uh, until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So, in other words, they want them to take the lamb, and they're going to kill it on the fourteenth. Seven. And they shall take of the blood, and strike it on two sides of the post, on the upper doorpost of the house, wherein they shall eat it. 
So you strike it on this side and on this side and above it. So if you look at it, you have like a cage around you at, on that, okay? Eight. And they shall eat the flesh in the night, roasted with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Eat not it of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roasted with fire. His head with his leg, and with his pertinence in thereof. In other words, all his guts are inside. Everything is there. They are to kill it, put the uh, blood over the doorpost, and cook everything. Okay? Number 10. And ye shall not, uh, so you shall let nothing of it remain till the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn it with fire. In other words, after you are done, if there's anything left over, burn everything. Burn the bones, everything. But you are to eat the whole animal, the heart, the gizzards, whatever, any kind of part of it. <laughs> okay? I know. All right, number 11. And thus shall ye eat with your loins girded, and your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, that ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods, this is a small g, of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. 13. And the blood shall be you for a token upon the house where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Now this is through their generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Oh, excuse me, forever. Fifteen. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your house. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be caught off from Israel. And in the first day, there shall be a holy conversation. In the seventh day, there shall be a holy conversation to you. No matter manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. And you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For in the selfsame day have I brought your, ar your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall you observe this day in your generation by the ordinance forever. And in the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at evening. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your house for whosoever Eateth that which is leaven, even the soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. Uh, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Uh, from what I can remember, you know, so, uh, they were saying that they had a, um, like a, uh, a cleaning day just before this. And anything that had any leaven in it, they would take it and throw it away. And, and it was, uh, uh, they did it like a party, like. All right, 20. You shall eat nothing leaven in all your inhabitation, tash, habitation shall ye eat unleavened bread. When Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your family and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bush of hyssop, of hyssop, 
and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin and none of you shall go out go out at the door of this house until morning so when you put it on there don't go out you stay in your house 23 for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptian and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and the two side posts the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come into your house to smite you and you shall observe the things for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever and it shall come to pass when ye be come to the land which the Lord will give you according to he hath promised that ye shall keep the service. In other words, you're going to keep it every year. Okay? Um, 26. And it shall come to pass when your children say shall say to you, What meaneth ye by this service? That ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt. When ye smote the Egyptians, and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshipped, and the children of Israel went away, and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in Egypt, and from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, and to the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of the cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, and he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where was one not dead, or not one dead. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night, and said, Rise up, Get you forth from among my people, both ye and your children of, I children of Israel, and go serve the Lord, as ye have said. Also take your flock and your herd, and as you said, and be gone, and bless me also. Alright, so here it is in the middle of the night. They're leaving, not in the daytime, like on that movie that they show you. So it wasn't during the day. It was in the night. It was dark outside. 33. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, We be all dead men. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, and they need throth, being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed, borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required. And they spoiled the Egyptians. Now here we go with this word spool again. They, and the spool means to take away from, not to give. And now uh, people go, oh... That child is spoiled with everything that we could give her. And, and really, spoiled means to be taken away. Boy, I'll tell you what, I wish somebody would spoil me now and take some of my junk away. Mm. Alright, 37. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramus to Scotius about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even every much cow, cattle. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victuals. Now the sojourn of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt 
was 430 years. So they were in bondage since Joseph was there. It was 430 years. Okay? So that's how long it was been since, you know, uh, Mo, uh, Joseph was there. 42. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is the night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generation. <coughs> Alright, 43. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof, but every male servant that is brought for money, when they have, have circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and a, a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten, and thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. All right, do not break any bones. Do not take it out of your house. And only the people that belongs to him can be, uh, can eat it. A man that is bought with money and is circumcised can eat it. All right, 47. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. When a stranger sh shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his muscles be circum um, muscles males be circumcised. That didn't come out right, did it? No. <laughs> uh, and then let him come near and keep it. So you have to be circumcised, and he shall be as one that is born in the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be. To him that is homeborn, and unto the stranger that sojourns among you. Thus did the children of Israel, and the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass the same day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. Okay, we are at the end. Now, I also want you to pay attention that armies is not, they're not talking about armies fighting. They're talking about armies as a group of people, not a fighting army. All right, so next time we will work on 13. So we did 10, 11, and 12. Thank you very much for watching. We love you, and good night. This is how to donate to my PayPal. You come down here to Poor Man's Sewing, and you mash on Poor Man's Sewing. Then you go over here to About. You mash on About, and right here is to donate to Poor Man's Sewing.